here, co-creator of nextlevelguitar.com. Hope all's going well, and I hope your guitar journeys are going famously. I've been receiving a lot of email questions of late about vibrato, especially from more beginner, intermediate beginner lead guitar players, stating things like they just can't seem to get the vibrato to sound right, and it sounds out of tune, and they're just not happy with it. And you know, vibrato is such a critical part of anyone's guitar arsenal, because it's almost like your unique fingerprint, right? It's your signature. You can identify so many players just by their vibrato. Guys like Ingbe Malmsteen, Joe Satriani, right? Carlos Santana, B.B. King, right? Steve Vai. They all have different types of vibrato, but each very personalized. And that's eventually the point you want to work up to, putting your own spin on it, creating and finding, like I talk about in these lessons a lot, your own voice, right? On the instrument. But in the beginning, you want to concentrate on getting that vibrato smooth and in tune. And so you're not bending it out of tune because that's going to sound very grating. And that's where a lot of that dissonance is coming from. So I'm going to show you all kinds of tips that are going to help you with that. And I have a killer practice exercise over a jam track that's really going to help you get this vibrato dialed in. A couple things first, though. If, if you haven't checked it out yet, I'm so excited. I just released my debut record with my new original band. I have an original band, Mind Cell is the name, right? And we just put out our debut record. It just dropped on all the platforms. It's on Spotify, it's on you know iTunes, it's on Apple Music, Deezer, uh, Tidal, it's on them all. I'll put links to it below. But if you could check it out um, and let me know what you think. And it's gonna be available on CD very soon also. But I really love your feedback. I think it's a slamming record. I'm so stoked about it. So I'll put links below if you could check out my new record. And also, hey, please subscribe to the channel. You know, subscribing to the channel, that really helps us to keep bringing the content. And it also lets you know when we're putting out some new lessons, right? Leave a comment below also. Let us know what you'd like to see coming up. Let me know what you think of uh, my new record. Uh, let us know what lessons or gear you'd like to see reviewed. And, uh, or if you have a question on anything, leave it below. Please like the video if you like it. Click the like button, share it, and we thank you so much for your support. And remember, it's all about the sounds, and we're talking about the vibrato technique, right? And eventually, you want to develop into your own signature, your own style, and take it wherever you want. But for now, let's just concentrate, concentrate on getting it smooth and even and sounding in pitch. Okay, that's really important at first. Then you can kind of take it from there and start going doing whatever you want with it. The first thing is when you're trying to vibrato a note, and let's do this. Let's just pick one scale and we're going to stay in that scale through this whole lesson and also for the exercise I'm going to give you. And I want to give you an exercise that's going to work the vibrato for all four fingers. Your first, second, third, and fourth fingers. The scale, we're going to be in the key of E minor. And uh, just so you know, the jam track we're going to be used is just a simple two chord change, wide open, which is what you want. And it's just an E minor chord to a B minor chord. Okay, and I'll tell you how you can get this exact same jam track later in the lesson. I'll send it to you for free. Uh, and you could use it to practice over because it's going to be a killer exercise. Okay, so the scale we're going to use to practice this is our E natural minor scale. And let me show you, we're going to take it off of the fifth string root E note. And that scale looks like this. So one finger per fret. That's going to be perfect what we're going to need to work the vibrato and the exercises in this lesson. Here's how I want you to think about the vibrato. Think of it like you're massaging the notes into the fretboard. And it doesn't, you don't want it to be like jerky, like you're jerking the note up and up and up. Think of it like 
Here's your note in pitch, is this line. You want to bend the note or shake it a little bit above and then below, but trying to keep that distance the same, okay? That's what's going to make it that smooth sound. You don't want to bend the note and then vibrato it like this because it's going to sound harsh and out of pitch. And I'll demonstrate that later when I play over the track, but that's what a lot of students tend to do at first. They tend to like bend the note up a little bit and then start shaking it, right? And it sounds really harsh and grating to the ear because it's not in pitch and you don't have that smooth flowingness to it. And again, if you want that harsh kind of fast kind of vibrato, BB King, whatnot, uh, that's great. But later on, at first, let's get you getting sounding it good first and then you take it from there. And I keep saying that because I don't want to trample on anyone's style and I don't want you to think like there's only one way of doing this, right? Because I want to keep you creative. But at first, I see this as an issue with so many students. Now, the other thing I see students doing a lot too is they'll tend to try to move their finger really fast instead of just slowing it down nice and even at first. Okay, here what I'm doing is I'm on that seventh fret on that F sharp note. And I'm just massaging it into the fretboard. Like just let it push it up a little bit and let it back down. Smooth. And this is a perfect jam track. We're working over this in this lesson because it's wide open and lots of space. You want to have lots of space in your playing at first. The other thing I see stu students doing a lot too is they're really like wrenching the note. Like they're pushing it so hard into the fretboard that it's actually causing the note to jerk in and out of tune instead of being smooth. You don't have to like press that hard. All right. Now we're not talking about like the aggressive style and killing the notes like a la Stevie Ray Vaughan or something. Right now, we're just concentrating it on the vibrato technique of smoothing it out, smooth vibrato, right? So don't don't get in there and really start wrenching it. Just really light touch, right? If we vibrato that E note, and I'm at the ninth fret on the G string, I'm not pushing down that hard at all. You'll see me vibratoing notes with all four fingers. I'll use first, second, third, and fourth. What I see students do a lot, especially at first, is they'll try vibratoing notes and they'll only use one finger, even in situations when they can use multiple fingers. And I want you to use two, three, four fingers at first if you can, because you're going to have way more strength and control with multiple fingers than you do with one finger. Same thing with bending strings, right? You wanna bend strings with as many fingers as you, as you can at first, cause that's gonna give you the most strength and accuracy, right? So what I'll see a lot of students do a lot, like that E note I just vibrato, they'll do something like this, without vibratoing it with one finger. Um, at first, put all three fingers down. That's gonna give you the strength and control so you could start hearing and start saying, okay, that's starting to sound a little bit smoother. Um, so when you have the opportunity to use multiple fingers, like here, I'm using two fingers on that G note on the B string on the eighth fret. Instead of just using the one, put both down. Get all your fingers down if you can. When you're vibrating like that A note at the 10th fret, four fingers down and practice. Go real wide at first. But again, listen. Okay, think of it as that massage. A lot of my students, they're like, wow, when I mention that word massage, they're like, yeah, I didn't think of it like that. And that seems to help. So think of it like you're lightly massaging into the fretboard. And this is a technique that's going to take a little bit of time. And to really work this practice exercise, I'll tell you what, I'll send you the same jam track that I'm using in this lesson. The same E minor to B minor kind of psychedelic Floyd inspired jam track. It sounds great. It's just those two chords. I'll send you my jam track coach. It has that jam track and five more different keys. So you could practice this in different keys. So you get six killer sounding jam tracks and I pair it with two eBooks. One eBook I go over the chords in the track. I tell you soloing strategies, what works over the chords, what why, what you want to try and get creative with, right? And then 
And in the second ebook, if you're not familiar with the scales I'm talking about, I have them all diagrammed out in the second ebook. So this is, I call this my jam track coach. I'll send it to you for free. All you gotta do is click on that link below. It's a killer practice tool that will help you throughout your guitar journey. So here is the exercise that I want you to practice. And it's so important to put what we're learning in context, in a musical context. That's why a lot of times when I'm teaching licks, and lick devices also, you'll see me demonstrate it over a jam track or talk about it over chords because you really need to be playing over that musical context because that helps you to develop rhythm and timing. Plus, you'll be able to hear when you're out of tune. If you're just sitting there by yourself doing it, it's not as um, proficient, I think, as if you're playing over a track because when you have that track behind you and those chords going on behind you, you'll be able to know when you're out of tune. So what I want you to do in this exercise is you're gonna stay, you're gonna put on that jam track. You're gonna go and get it. Uh, click on that link below, right? And I'll send you this jam track and five more for free and the eBooks. So go get the jam track. And then I want you to put the jam track on. And I just want you to stay in that one position, that E natural minor scale, because that is one finger per fret. And you can use first finger vibrato, second finger vibrato, third finger and fourth finger vibrato. And just sit there and just hit those, slide the notes around, and add that vibrato in. Little licks. Half step bends with that first finger. Resolving a lot of licks to that E note at the ninth fret G string. Or over the B chord, you can resolve to the B note, ninth fret D string, or you can use that one at that seventh fret on the high E string. What I really want you to concentrate on is the sound of the vibrato and feeling it as you do that massage. of notes with lots of space for you to really work that vibrato. Um, let me put the jam track on. I'll sh show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I have the jam track on now. You hear the E minor chord, right? It's always a good idea to know the chords you're playing over. That gives the complete and full roadmap to what you can use soloing and improvisation wise, right? Switch to the B minor chord, right? So just have that in the back of your mind. Here, switch again. E minor, right? Okay. So let's take that E natural minor scale and let's just small first, really focusing on the vibrato like I talked about in the lesson. One finger, first finger vibrato, using your second finger, two finger vibrato, third finger, three finger vibrato, fourth finger, all four vibrato. Just sliding around some notes in that scale, right? And listen for the pitch. Okay, here we go.
exercise, you know, add, you know, five to 10 minutes of that vibrato work in your practice regimen. It'll really pay off huge. And vibrato is something that's going to evolve over time into your own signature, right? But really concentrate on some of the techniques that we talked about to get it sounding super smooth at first, and then you can take off from there. I hope this lesson helped you. Please feel free to email me any questions. We do regular FAQ sessions here on the channel. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel. You know, that really helps us to keep bringing the content, let you know when our, uh, we have another lesson posted. But don't forget, get my jam track coach. Six killer jam tracks, including the one I'm using throughout this lesson, right? Six of them and two ebooks. Just click on that link below. Please check out my new record. The record's called Absolute. My original band is Mind Cell. It's a new project. This is our debut record. I'm so stoked about it. I'll put links to all the platforms it's on below. I'm David Taub, co-creator of Next Level Guitar. You're the good people. Thanks so much for tuning in over the years and years. We so appreciate it here at Next Level Guitar. Rock on, good people. Remember, your guitar playing is an evolution. I'll see you in the next lesson. Yeah.